Hey, it's All Day Live. Thanks for watching this week. Uh, and I appreciate the support that we get from the community watching. It's important that we do try to help each other, try to become more informed as a community, especially in a time like this. This is a very unique time. And I'm Will P. Wilson, and thanks for watching the All Day Live show this week. We have Stu Webb. We're greatly honored to have Stu Webb. And uh, Stu, is, uh, his articles and editorials are found at Veterans Today. Com. And we've also got the great honor of having John Lear. And if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you'll find out that he's also one of the top CI pilots in history, if not the top man. I'm going to let them carry it from here. Uh, John, aren't you the top CI pilot in history? No, I don't think so. What uh, I flew in, uh, in uh, Laos uh, for the uh, CIA, um, and uh, I had, I think, let's see, 550 combat missions and then I also flew for them from between 67 and 71 or 70 uh, ferrying airplanes to uh, Vietnam and then uh, some stuff in Somalia in the uh, later uh, 70s um, so yeah I did uh, fly for them but uh, I'm not one of their top guys uh, Jim Ryan was the uh, was the chief pilot and he was he was the best as good as they ever come uh -huh. But you've flown everything, John. I mean, realistically, you are probably rated as one of the very top in the world as far as your ratings, pilot ratings, aren't you? Yeah, let's say uh, the top ten. Um, uh, what I have is I don't think anybody's broken this record is I have the most FAA-issued certificates. And uh, some people say ratings, but no, it's not that because you can have all kinds of different ratings. But I have the most certificates. I think there's 11 of them, and they range from uh, airline transport pilot to instructor to flight engineer to control tower operator, all those things. And I think I'm the only one that has all of them. Uh, the last one that uh, that I got that uh, people have trouble getting is because they just don't have any place to uh, to get these anymore is the navigation rating. And um, that I took that in a uh, 707 between New York and Amsterdam, and that was one of the last navigator ratings issued, and I think that was in 1977. Well, wow. yeah. Okay, John, uh, huh? let's go on Have to the seen? first subject. Uh, just touch huh? on 911. You did an affidavit, oh, I have it on my website, and you did an affidavit about 911 that no planes hit the World Trade Tower. Now, I had reported in 2006 from a source I had, they used phantom technology, they call it, and it's a form of holograms. They're able to shoot out an airplane and, and actually make it look like uh, planes hit that tower. I've seen holograms also myself of helicopters hovering over me. Uh, it was an incident that occurred, and they had about 20 of them that freaked out the whole little town I was in. And said, but you, you can see them, and they go over you. And then all of a sudden the sound dies, and then the sound picks back up, and then the sound dies, and then it picks up. But yet the visual, you can still see it. So yeah. with that, would you touch on what you wrote in that affidavit and what you know about the Twin Towers? Yeah, well, that affidavit was uh, written in uh, support of uh, uh, Morgan Reynolds filing, uh, trying to get... Uh, uh, the 23 people that were involved in, or 23 companies that were involved in that uh, bombing of, or, or the destruction of uh, World Trade Center. And uh, what I was saying, uh, what I pointed out, is I used uh, technical um, mathematics showing how it would be impossible for airplanes to travel that fast. In other words, in other words they say that one of the 767s traveled at uh, 561 miles an hour uh, at sea level. That's impossible. It can't go more than 380 miles an hour. And uh, uh, it's just, and for a uh, pilot, uh, for his first time in the airplane to have flown that, uh, that, uh, that close it, it, that that's also impossible because he would have taken over the controls uh, about uh, ten or fifteen thousand feet, uh, ninety miles to the north of Boston. He would have had to turn around and find uh, find um, uh, New York, and that 
for a pilot who can't even uh, fly a 172, that would be a, a real uh, tough job. But anyway, then the pilot comes down, lines up, and hits his target. Uh, World Trade Center was 200 feet, 208 feet wide, and he hits a dead center at the uh, about the 70th or 80th story. Uh, it's just, you can't do that. I couldn't even do that. At the top of my career, uh, when I was really current, uh, I couldn't have done that. You would have to have lined up uh, and maybe did, done a couple of passes uh, to be able to have uh, got that kind of accuracy. But there's no way that uh, anybody could have done it the way they showed us it happened. So um, what happened with the, uh, the, uh, the fourth airplane was uh, Flight 93, that was supposed to hit, or they were supposed to pretend that it hit the uh, uh, building number seven. But what happened, whatever they were using, whatever method they were using, uh, failed. And they didn't know what to do because they, they were going to use that as uh, crashing into building number seven. So what they did is <clears throat> they said they couldn't find it. Uh, and what they did is they went down to Shanksville, uh, dug a hole, uh, put some parts in it, uh, got some hazmat suits for some guys, had them standing around, and then they let the press in there at 5 o'clock, which was six hours after uh, the alleged crash, and they let the reporters in, and the reporters bought it hook, line, and sinker that that had been the fourth airplane that had crashed there. But anybody who knows anything about airplanes uh, looked at that crash scene, and there was no tail, there was no uh, evidence of any parts. Uh, the backhoe uh, showed an evidence of uh, one kind of a ring. Uh, could have been either a brake or could have been uh, something from the engine, but uh, we never saw the backhoe dig into it, dig into the ground and get it. It could have just been placed there earlier and then had the back row uh, backhoe turned around but anyway the whole thing was a fake and uh, it was to promote number one the uh, security that we, that we got going now and uh, and uh, and it worked so the the uh, been many people that try to expose this but uh, it hasn't happened up to now now we if the planes had hit the World Trade Center I remember reading the affidavit in detail, and being a, a, a building contractor, with the steel pillars, the amount of steel or the pillars, the, and then concrete steel combined, the type of rods they used, and so forth. Now, the space and the difference between, and I forgot exactly what it read, but if a plane had hit that, the wings would have broke off, and the tail section would have broke off. Isn't that pretty accurate? Yeah, the, the uh, tail section would have instantly come apart because it's the airplane is built in three sections: the uh, cockpit and forward section, then the midsection, which is the uh, fuselage uh, that holds the wings uh, to the fuselage, and then the aft um, and the aft part of the fuselage. When that nose hit that concrete and steel, it would have immediately impacted uh, the. Um, uh, when it hit the impact of the steel, the uh, aft part of the airplane would have just instantly broken off and been thrown up against the building and then would have been crashed back down. But there was very few parts, if any parts, on that side of the building. And we're talking about the South Tower and America or, and uh, United uh, 175. Now, another thing I might add is that here, I think about nine months to a year ago, Gordon Duff, editor of Veterans Today, uh, reported that all of a sudden they supposedly found a one of the wheels sections from one of those so-called airplanes between two buildings that have supposedly been sitting there all this whole time. Uh, you know, and this is like a half a block away, and visible to anybody walking by either side, and suddenly it just appeared because they needed to, to say, "Oh, well, here was a wheel section from all these years that have been hidden since 911." I want to throw that out now. The no, I was the one that exposed that as a as a uh, come along. That was uh, something that you used to uh, to bring two chains together. That had nothing, that had nothing to do with uh, an airplane. You can see the kind of bolts and rivets that they use there, and nothing is of any uh, airline certification. That was oh, okay. that was immediately BS. Yeah, it was. Okay, now there's uh, on the Pentagon. The section on the Pentagon that supposedly got hit by an airplane that once again 
I mean, I don't know whether it was a missile, whether it was a phantom, and they blew a hole in the thing. A lot of people think it's some kind of a uh, like similar to cruise missile. Suppose they hit it. Now, the veterans today again released the videotape earlier in the year uh, that the FBI had hidden that was off of a hotel that shows it looked like a missile going in there. Now, it, right exactly the same spot that Catherine Fitz, who had exposed the three, the ex-HUD official that was sent in to clean up HUD in 1989 after I caused the HUD uh, hearings and the HUD scandal, and uh, she was the one who hired off Wall Street. Then they fired her from HUD because she was trying to do her job and uh, Kemp wouldn't allow her, Jack Kemp, former football player, former senator, I think he was, a congressman, and wouldn't allow, him to allow her to do her job. Well, then, later on, I come across her, and in 1997, I believe it was, she had reported, or not 1997, 2000, and, and one it was that she reported that there was two, $3.2 trillion missing out of the Pentagon budget, and the accountant for the Pentagon and other agencies was Dynacorp. And you know who Dynacorp is, I believe. Yeah, but they were missing the money. Well, the accountants were in there, uh, you know, special investigators in the exact location in the Pentagon that were blown up, supposedly, where a plane supposedly hit the, the Pentagon, the exact spot. Here's all the records of the missing $3.2 trillion. They're going over this, special agents and the whole bit, and they wiped that place out. But if an uh, airplane had hit that Pentagon, wouldn't there be something in a way of videotape that they re that they obtained under Freedom of Information from the hotel instead of a, a missile-looking thing? Wouldn't it have been big wings coming through there? And wouldn't there have been wing marks and wings broken off and the same thing hitting the Pentagon? Well, of course, but we have April Gallup's testimony. She was sitting 40 feet away from the from the explosion, and she said there was no airplane, no missile, no uh, no gas explosion, nothing except uh, explosive, like a thermite, a thermite explosion. Uh, there was no uh, fuel, no airplane, no nothing. She took her six-month-old son, who was uh, in his uh, baby seat at, uh, under her desk, and she took him and crawled through that hole uh, out onto the uh, grass uh, to get triage, and uh, she was visited by uh, Army security uh, that day and for ever since, and she refuses to change her story, and they, they wanted her to say that, you know, she saw an airplane and, uh, and uh, people and luggage and all that, and she says, no, I didn't see any of that. It was just uh, one uh, explosion. Okay. Uh, the Pentagon also was going under construction, reconstruction, to enforce it at the time. Are you aware that bin Laden's construction company had the contract on that section of the Pentagon? No, I wasn't. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. It was very interesting to find that out. It was tied to, tied to uh, Daddy Bush and, uh, and uh, oh, God, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm losing thought, but the company that they run, it's a defense contractor, had the contract on it. But, uh, John, you wanted, to, you wanted to touch on the Japanese disaster. Tell everybody what you know about Yeah, that. Fukushima, as a matter of fact, right now I'm trying to find the um, <clears throat> trying to find the website that we need to look at. But uh, uh, this guy uh, very did a very thorough uh, investigation on that. It turns out that the Israelis uh, got the um, contract to manage the 52 uh, uh, nuclear uh, facilities for the Japanese uh, about uh, four to six months before all of uh, the Fukushima problem. Uh, and then what happened is uh, the uh, Israelis found out that uh, Japan was giving uh, Iran high-grade uh, plutonium for uh, uh, Iran's alleged bomb. And in the payback is uh, uh, the... Um, uh, Israelis set off a nuclear bomb about 120 miles to the northeast of Fukushima, and uh, that made the uh, the waves come up. And then at the same time, they because they had full control of the uh, nuclear facilities, they caused everything to fail. So that when that was inundated with water, uh, all their uh, backup systems failed, and that's why there were so much problems there. But it was all over the fact that the Israelis found out that uh, Japan was selling the uh, high-grade uh, nuclear uh, material uh, to Iran. So 
you've come to know the Israelis over the years, and you've watched the pattern. <clears throat> I mean, I think everybody, or at least a huge portion of the country, and everybody's kind of in agreement that, you know, that the Israelis were involved, as well as certain people in, in, in our government on 911, Cheney and the Bushes and, and the Milmans and the Mizels and the Bibi Netanyahu's of Israel and the Mossad and the dancing Israelis, and the list goes on. And, and everybody points, keeps pointing the finger, even in a 16 right. intelligence agency report that was released last October that I did, I'm not privy to read it, but I have had two sources tell me that they have pointed the finger at these people consistently. And this one finally, you know, summarized it with the fact they were behind Oklahoma City, they were behind 911, they've been involved in every financial scandal since in the early 1980s, including guns and drugs and Iran Contra, yeah, clear through the savings alone, through through uh, government contract frauds, to spying on the American people through the telephones, first with the Congress and the Senate, the, the Jonathan Pollard spying that set us back in Russia and the Middle East for up about 10 years with the codes and all the other stuff that they've been involved Involved. And uh, so, you know, here, here we are in, you know, 2012 with a report like this, a scathing report, point directly at the Israelis, the Bushes, uh, and APEC-controlled espionage. Um, would you be a, a, somewhat in agreement with that? Yeah, absolutely. And I just found out, let me, uh, anybody wants to tune to this, uh, I was uh, uh telling about this Fukushima website, it's Gemstone Freelance, that's J-I-M-S-T-O-N-E, and then Freelance, all one word, and uh, he was a freelance journalist, and uh, he, uh, in this uh, website, you can find out all about Fukushima, how it happened, how it was planned by the Israelis, and uh, just very interesting. Okay. It's just amazing that, that we're in a circumstance where they are, they were really involved, weren't they? This is what we'll see. The Israelis. Who's that? This oh, is absolutely. I mean. Now, John, is there any way of turning around the oceans, what has happened to the Pacific Ocean, the radiation contamination? Is there any way of even, even getting this thing back on track? Uh, we don't have to worry about that. All we have to worry about is ourselves, and uh, we're here to learn how to live with integrity and without envy, hate, or greed. That's the whole reason we're on this prison planet, and there's a billion times a trillion prison planets just like Earth. And apparently those of us, and, uh, and uh, both of you, and, and uh, I have lived many, many lives before this, and in the past couple of free uh, uh, couple of the uh, lives before this uh, we have made a mistake and we're down here uh, to rectify that mistake and the way we do it is to learn how to live with uh, integrity and without envy hate or greed and so we're not here to uh, change the world we're here for the world to change us and uh, if we can adhere to those principles we can get out of here and we don't have to worry about the them cleaning up the ocean and like anything like that we want to get up into the next dimension which some people call heaven it's not that it's the fourth dimension and it's a place that we want to be okay what about real quick this is will, will wilson um Stu and john we i've mentioned to Stu we'd like to get to, uh, colonel tom bearden on our program uh about talking about scalar physics and how it might be able to work but then again there's also radionics and radiesthesia which probably would work as well uh what's your thoughts on that yeah, there's all kinds of ways to fix this problem, but uh, there's too many bad guys out there, and uh, it's, it's just it's just not going to happen. And like I say, you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is worry about yourself, uh, getting complied to, uh, living your life without envy or without uh, in, uh, or with integrity and without envy, hate or greed, and then you can go to the fourth dimension. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Well, we're kind of we're kind of stuck in this dimension right now, John. Will and I both with our thoughts, and I guess it's because we want change here. I would like to see I would like to see this whole crime syndicate, this Illuminati bunch of Satanist pigs, are you know uh, put behind bars for what they've done to to the humanity here. Uh, so you know whether we can fix uh, the radiation problem, whether we can fix the golf.
Gulf of Mexico from all that uh, cyanide and arsenic and all the other that they dumped in there, whether these things can be done, I don't know. But I, I respect what you have to say, John. Yeah, okay. John, real quick, this is Will Wilson. What's your thoughts about the government or military? I know they have a lot of stuff that's classified. Uh, what about them using scalar physics? I mean, we, you know, what about that in radionics? I mean, you have to be able to afford to, to have the technology. Well, the government and corporate contractors have that money to do that. Why aren't they doing that? I mean, uh, is something... Uh, they have. The, the people that really run the, uh, the United States have all that technology, and they're using that technology uh, to, um, <sighs> to uh, create these... Uh, uh, weapons that destroyed the uh, World Trade Center, and uh, they did the Mira building, which is just a, uh, uh, a uh, preparation for the World Trade Center. But uh, what happened was <clears throat> when uh, President Kennedy uh, said we wanted to go to the moon, we realized NASA knew that uh, we could not do that. So what we did is we arranged a plan to fake uh, the moon mission, and then we used all that money uh, to set up this... Uh, these uh, 24 orbiting uh, weaponized satellites. And they're the ones that uh, are doing these uh, uh, real serious uh, uh, explosions. And um, you'll notice when the World Trade Center 1 and 2 came down, there was absolutely uh, no big parts. All it was was uh, um, dust about 80 microns in diameter. <clears throat> and there was a few larger pieces, but that was it. If that had been anything like controlled demolition, there would have been uh, a 13 percent of the uh, of the material, concrete, and uh, aluminum and steel uh, left. But there wasn't. There was less than one one percent, less than one story of that stuff left. So certainly they do have those weapons. <clears throat> There's a website. Uh, we uh, we have it on. Uh, uh, thelivingmoon.com, uh, you can find out uh, these pictures taken by, um, I'm trying to think of his name. Anyway, he has pictures of these uh, orbiting uh, weaponized satellites, and they're really fantastic. They're huge. They look like to be about three or 400 feet uh, in length. Uh, and uh, they're they're really interesting. Take a look at that on the uh, thelivingmoon.com. Um, where, where would I go, John? Um, <clears throat> Where, where, John, this is yeah. Will Wilson. Where would I go to on your website? I've got it sitting here. I've got Santa Claus is Real. Of course, we're getting to the holiday season here. Where, where okay, on your website? On. Let me get there and uh, see. Hold on a second. Okay. But, Stu, uh, we got about five minutes left until the next half. We're going to do another segment. And uh, what's your thoughts about... Uh, at least us trying to be able to solve some problems, at least using our ability to communicate, to try to find answers, well, find remedies. Let, uh, let, me, let me touch on something, Will, real quick, while we're still on the subject of uh, the 911. I heard on the day of 911, <clears throat> I called someone at high up in government and asked them what the hell happened. The buildings dropped that way, what John's talking about, because beyond the building contractor, it would have pancaked. And, controlled demolition and of course it was weakened i mean there's videotapes out there showing bombs going off and so forth uh <clears throat> but the party said it was east systems dallas texas and what was known as the death ray which is out at area 51 that they used their satellites to do it with now you know other people have said there was uh, radiation tracks of a, of a nuclear bomb, they believe, military intelligence have told me that they believe it was uh, on the 80th floor. And it could have been, and they hit it with the death ray, could have possibly done that. But that death ray will dissolve. It's some kind of a, a ray they can hit it with. And it, 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 in layman terms, it dissolves the matter around you, Will, and then you dissolve. And E-Systems is controlled Jeez. by the Bush Crime Center, by Daddy Bush. Right, the Encorp now owns E-Systems. E-Systems is to what, uh, Iran uh, Contra. It uh, is still involved in guns and drugs, trafficking in children, uh, out of Fort Worth, Texas, uh, based in Dallas, and it is part of Raytheon, the division. George W. Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush, Jeb Bush, and Margaret Thatcher's son were all getting paychecks from the place during the 1990s. Jeez. 
But you think they'd, 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 you think they'd use that technology to try to help save the planet? Of course, that's not logical. That's not what they're after. <laughs> it's Amazing. the evil side of them that is destroying. They've got to have total control over every man on the planet, every woman. Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of a phenomenon that they're going to destroy the very planet they're on. Probably. They don't uh, worry about that because, John, I want you to, we don't have much time, but we touch on what's in the existence on the Mars and the moon as an example of the amount of I'm people there. Well, the moon has uh, roughly a quarter of a billion people live up there. Uh, Mars, every single planet in our uh, solar system uh, is occupied with uh, one or more civilizations. Uh, there's 40 planets in our solar system, uh, not the nine that NASA tells you, but there's 40, and uh, they're all occupied. Uh, and these stories about us uh, going there, it may be true, but uh, it would be with the, uh, with the help and, uh, uh, and aid of, of those that are living there. Now, on the living moon, you'll see some of the pictures I've got uh, that uh, have pictures of their mining operations and uh, all the things that are going up there. But we've really been led down the, uh, uh, the primrose path on this moon thing. They, sent the, uh, they allegedly sent the Apollo mission there. The main thing was to prove to the uh, public that uh, there was nothing there, uh, which is not true. It's absolutely chock full of uh, people and civilization. Uh, there is a breathable atmosphere there. There is a gravity that's equal to 70% that of Earth. All this is scientifically proven. There's another lady you want to read if you get a chance. Her name is Perry Spolter, S-P-O-L-T-E-R. She wrote a book called uh, The, the um, Gravitational Force of the Sun, and this completely uh, blows Einstein and Newton out of the water as to what they uh, were saying, and it's really good physics. Uh, all you need is uh, high school, maybe a couple years of college to understand what she's saying. Uh, but once people do understand that, they'll realize that we have been led down the primrose path and uh, nothing, almost everything we have seen is not true. Hold on one second. We'll be, we'll, if I can add this we'll be, hold on to that thought, Stu. We'll be right back. We'll hold on to that. We'll be right back. We'll see you in the next segment here in just a second. Okay, one, two, three, four. Hey, we're back. This is All Day Live. We've got the Honorable Stu Webb. I think I say honorable because if I was to go in a courtroom today in the United States, I think I'd be lying if I said something about a judge being honorable. But again, Stu, I think you're at least honorable. And thank you, John Lear, the oh, great and honorable John Lear. We're back again. So catch that thought. Let's, let's hear, what was that about that, Stu? We're back. Well, uh, uh, one of the things I found doing the money trail on my ex-in-law letters Millman, that's one that counts on 13, you know, the 12 richest worth 100 trillion. Been robbing and looting America with the Bushes and the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and Anzwar Venturi and, and it, the list goes on. Yeah. Is that the, the 100 trillion dollars worth of mortgages that they created from Richmond American homes out of thin air and buying up mortgages around? And then they derivatize them. The five thousand trillion is what the numbers have come to so far. Yeah. And then stealing twelve point five million houses from people by claiming they own their mortgage when in fact those people were paying their mortgage to XYZ mortgage company down the street and the crooked attorneys come in and tell the judge, uh, we own the mortgage, we bought it, and we have it registered with MERS that they created in nineteen ninety three when they were pulling the same scam on the FDIC and using paid off bribe stooges approving the FDIC insurance out of Dallas, Texas, and investigators that they had in on the tape. They had created MERS to cover their rear end then, now they're still using MERS. I kept asking myself, and I kept asking others, if they created $5,000 trillion worth of paper F, I call it F U. See, and you can imagine the rest of the words, paper, F, where is the money? They own 92 to 97 percent of the economies worldwide, whereas in 81, the General Accounting Office said 
the one percent only controlled twenty percent of the economy and in last year in june of two thousand twelve they were up to ninety five percent one percent so it flip flopped in the past twenty some odd years almost thirty years it flip flopped uh... between the american ownership the americans and small business mom pop operations and them taking it over well they could have bought the economies up with five thousand trillion dollars several times over why where did all the money go i got the same answer from everybody in various agencies of government that are in the know they said it's off planet they've been building huge bases off planet mars moon just like john Lear speaking of John, if uh, these planets are inhabited by intelligent people and more evolved than we are, well, they must be here, I mean, and watch us and walk amongst us, right? I mean, am I wrong? I mean, I don't know. They, they, they must be waiting. They must, they must be walking around just, we just, they don't much, they probably don't look any different than us, do they? I mean, I don't, well, I don't know. Well, the, uh, the thing they're calling Bigfoot is uh, from Mars. Uh, he's the uh, pr principal uh, occupant of Mars, but there are other civilizations on Mars, just like there's several civilizations on Earth um, uh, that, that that are different. Well, I can, add, I can add a couple things that uh, I've become aware of. You know, I have a belief uh, in God, mm. and my belief, and you know, John and I, everybody's entitled to their own belief and their own religion if they have one or whatever it is. I don't have a religion. I think I have a God, and I believe in Christ. So uh, with that said, you know, I look at what's called the Nephilim bloodline, and I look at the fact that in Genesis 6 of the Bible, it says that the fallen angels kicked out of heaven before we arrived on the planet with, with uh, Adam and Eve, that, uh, you know, and we supposedly have power and authority over these angels, that in Genesis 6, they mate with humans. And uh, I've been told by people that are, if I were to mention it, John would know, and off the air I can talk to John about it, but if I were to mention it on the air, it would get a lot of people in trouble. And I can't do that. But I'm aware of people who monitor uh, these aliens. I'll leave it that way. Now, I'm aware that there's about 200,000 of them uh, that are supposedly aliens, fallen angels, whatever you want to call them, that possess humans. That means they're humans, and then they take possession of them. And they're walking among us, but they're in government. They're in hierarchy of this crime syndicate, this Illuminati crime syndicate. It's like organized crime, 12 families, head families, and underneath them, they got thousands underneath each one of them. They're buffers, they call them. And then, uh, um, the Illuminati it's referred to as and I'm aware that the Bible says that when there was a fight in heaven up there that a third of the angels were kicked down and with estimated about a million so that would be about 333,000 and if that be the case and they've been making with humans I've been asking also and have asked for the past few years how many of them made it with humans how many humans do we have that are you know I'm beginning to believe that they don't have a soul uh, because they yeah. make with humans. And I've been told that there's probably about 2 million, or excuse me, not 2 million, 20 million that are on the planet. And there's possibly even higher than that, 20 million, 200,000 that are possessed by these aliens, fallen angels, and uh, 20 million that are hybrids. Now, Dr. Preston James is into this very heavily. He's a columnist on Veterans Today. He's been doing research for years. I've known him since the early 90s. We've known about each other, and they're really hooked up until the past year, year and a half. Uh, but he has gotten in this extensively. If you punch his name, Preston James, uh, you know, and I think John Lear, uh, John knows more than a lot of us do, uh, you know, but I think Preston has really been defining some of this stuff uh, because of sources that he has as well that are within government that are leaking the information to him and have been. He's really defined a lot of this stuff. Uh -huh. Did you? 
Okay, with that said, I've got to run, you guys. Uh, call me again, and uh, we'll we'll come back and do this again. Okay, John, we're greatly honored to have you on and appreciate it. Uh, so this will be up broadcast in a few days, so appreciate it. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank we'll you. Talk to you later. Thank, Thank you, you, John. All right, bye. Bye. Hey, uh, Stu, real quick, uh, as far as this council during this holiday, uh, can you tell us how many different locations they might gather during you know, this winter solstice around the United States? Well, the winter and summer solstice are satanic holidays, and on my website I put the post up today, and I'm going to put it up tonight on Veterans Today or tomorrow morning. And uh, <clears throat> I've reported on this since 2001 because I discovered it was going on on the winter su summer solstice. It's to deal with ley lines, L-E-Y lines, and it's to deal with numerology. And it happens to be the Colorado's on one of those ley lines and to deal with numerology. Now, they, uh, a, a uh, preacher named Jim Wessler uh, had contacted me in 2004 after he saw my report in 2002. And I haven't been able to get a hold of him in the past couple of years. I think he might be dead. But someone's maintained the website. Uh, and you might punch in Google Jim Wessler. But he had said that he caught him in Belgium, the top dogs. I forgot which date it was, which satanic date. And then he put the heat down on some other satanic dates. And it happened to be at a castle there that they actually busted some people in Europe, top-level government officials in Europe, along with some top businessmen who were Satanists, who were doing this at this particular place. And it was all over the news. And it was around 2004, I think, is when the, he got them busted, uh, put the heat on them. So Satanism is real, and up on my website, Stu Webb, S -T -E -W -W -B -B com. right now I have the story, and it is up there about December the 22nd, coming up on Saturday night or on Sunday morning, witching hour, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m., they'll be doing it. But if you were to go in and look, I have the uh, satanic chart from Anton LaVey's son, Anthony LaVey who did an interview with me, and in there, there's the interview, uh, about 45 minutes, it was cut, it was really strange, we did an hour, but it was cut, and it was shortly cut after he talked about being castrated in Denver, Colorado, when he was 13 years of age. Now, I came across the girl in Las Vegas, and uh, uh, I can't get into a name, but, uh, you know, she was a roommate of a very famous girl uh, that was tied, uh, Watergate, ties, niece, etc. And, uh, you know, they said he pulled down his pants to prove he had been castrated because they couldn't believe it. And Anthony's a, a preacher today, a Christian minister. You know, uh, you know, he has faith, but I put him in there. And he talked about pre-ritual parties at my ex-in-law's house in that interview in 2005 or 2006 that we did the interview. He talked about the fact that, you know, the pre-ritual parties, they sodomize their own children and their grandchildren and their, their friends' children Jeez. that they invite to the party. And before they go kill a kid and drink its blood and Satan comes up and uh, uh, appears before them, Baphomet, the goat-headed demon, Satan, the goat they're calling. And uh, he appears before them, and then he'll run out and do them a favor and kill somebody or, or do whatever. And he tells them what war to start next and, and what to make the move in the world and what country to take over and do different things. And this is the darkness. And uh, yeah. these are the things that they do. But it happens to be the Colorado. I identified it years ago and uh, in 2001. Nobody believed me until this past spring. June, or in the summer, in June, on the solstice, when this guy got nabbed in Oklahoma City trying to kidnap a kid, and sat there and told the cops he was kidnapping the kid for the Illuminati, he thought he was protected. He acted in the, in the scene with the cops, on video, that they released in the second part of the, the deal, on that TV state, uh, TV9 News down in Oklahoma City, where... He thought he was protected as though, oh, well, you know, call cops so-and-so. He's telling the cops to call a cop. He knows who I am. Uh, I'm kidnapping the kid for the Illuminati. I mean, it's almost like he thought he was protected. The cops shot him in the head and killed him. Get yeah. the kid away from him. Yeah. 
So, you know, this, as Gordon Duff of Veterans Today, the editor, said, this should have been the top news story of the entire country for the entire year. It should have been put out there. And as he said, Stu, you put a bullet in Larry Mizell's head, who now hosts the party since your father-in-law faked his death and went to hide out in Cuba, even though he attends the parties. Mizell now hosts them, where Millman used to host them, on the summer, winter solstice in Colorado. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Um, so if... Uh the but this will be going on all over the world, all over the planet, all the Satanists, all over the world will be doing human sacrifices. And I have a videotape on my site, and I had it for free for a long time on, on, on YouTube. I probably had 40,000 views. You couldn't believe the amount of Satanists coming out trying to comment, calling me a, a, a disgraceful MF and all these other words. I thought, whoa, what a demonic attack consistently. And then it was too many complaints from the Satanists that it was up there. An FBI ATF raid that an FBI agent gave me years ago said, Stu, I was involved in the raid. Here's a copy. We got a documentary. The guy's dead, the producer. He says, there's only three copies that I'm aware of. Now you have the fourth copy. So I took it, put it on YouTube, uh, and I've had it up there probably about five or six or four, three years, whatever it was, that I had the YouTube. And I had it on my site for a couple, three years prior to that. And I probably had about 10,000 views on my site. YouTube said, oh, you have to be 18 or older to even see this. These were a bunch of Satanists out in California performing human sacrifice. The cops and ATF were raiding them for a drug house. And they found out they had just committed uh, murder by cutting off a guy's head, putting it in a box in a plastic bag, and was going to ship it to some Satanists because they take these heads and these skulls and they worship it. There's some, uh, some more of their satanic crap. And they actually had a chalice on the bed uh, full of blood where they had drank the blood of the individual they killed. They found bodies in the backyard and the whole bit. It's a documentary, actually, and I have it on my site now, and I had about 10,000 views. And there are certain videotapes, you know, I don't get much in contributions, barely enough to even pay the Internet servicing fee each month and barely enough to pay my phone bill. I'm, I'm borrowing money to exist because I'm half crippled from them trying to kill me uh, in three car crashes. I roll over three times on a concrete barrier. I ask for contributions. Sometimes someone sends me a, a contribution here or there. It would be nice to get a few. But I went to charge it $1, 10 views in one month. You can look at it for 10 times. Take all your friends there on your IP. You know, if you use someone else's IP, it cuts you off. So it's a buck of you. The the satanic videos up there. Wow. Yeah. You know, buck here and a buck there. It, uh, you know, keeps food on my table. What do you know about uh, the law enforcement apparatuses? What do they, they don't do anything, do they? It's us. The problem it that we have in this food chain in this country is that it was defined, I think, by Preston James. It was the best article I'd ever seen. Dr. Preston James, former psychologist, retired. And, and he's a, a columnist of veterans today. If you go to stewweb.com, go to the right column, on my uh, on the computers or iPads, you scroll nearly to the bottom, and it'll be in that role. It says truth tellers, and it runs straight to his webs or to his link on Veterans Today. Uh, Preston will be posting his stuff soon on my website as well. I have new authors coming aboard, going to be dual posting a lot of the stuff from veterans as well as there's a few others that are going to be authors on my website. I'm turning my website into a magazine. Now, Preston wrote a story called 001 Kingpins, Cutouts, Hybrids, and Aliens. If you were to punch that in the search box on my site, it's also there, or go to his site and look at it. It's near the bottom of his page on Veterans Today. And then he's written, <clears throat> that was probably the best story of the food chain, describing the Illuminati and their cutouts. And what has happened, Will, in this country, 
is it's been very significant since the Kennedy death. It was a change, but it came uh, during the 70s and the privatizing of many of our uh, government agencies and the and the and the uh, contracting out of of the work for the government and etc. Where the corporations, the crime syndicate, begin looting the country real heavily, and part of the food chain has been. Uh, the Illuminati, uh, such as Meyer Lansky, you know, the Jewish mob controlling Arizona and controlling all the stuff was brought up before hearings in the 1960s and 70s for his crime syndicate, the commission, they call him, part of the mob worldwide. And uh, uh, Milman took over for him, my former father-in-law, that I didn't even know when I was married to his daughter who the hell this guy even was. I wasn't interested in him. I was interested in his daughter. And, uh, you know, when they took my infant daughter from me, which I still don't have a relationship 29 and a half years ago, <clears throat> and my grandson, they don't even know me because of a illegal lifetime restraining order, uh, you know, through a second divorce that was illegal, uh, I haven't been able to change that. I haven't even been able to get an attorney. I've had two attorneys that were scared to death of the FBI, threaten them to kill them, and I've had two die, and one had a triple bypass as a result of being poisoned by the Mossad. So, you know, it's hard to get an attorney, and when I've talked to a few of them, they get threats, and uh, they don't want to touch it. So, I can't even lift this lifetime restraining order. Until recently, I've acquired an attorney who's uh, protected. He works for Gov, an agency of Gov, and uh, they do special favors for guys like me on occasion, and maybe it will work at some point. Uh, I might be able to change that. But in this food chain, my ex-in-law was very high up. That's the reason I followed this money trail over the years, and it was always tied to Daddy Bush, because Daddy Bush graduated with him from Yale University together. They were skull and bones buddies, you know. They, it's where they sell their soul to the devil and do the whole thing. They were also generational Satanism. The grandmothers, the grandfathers, etc. their parents uh, were, were also into this. But in that food chain, if you take and break it down and you start looking at what they have done to this country, I mean, you'll have one FBI agent or two FBI agents sitting in a squad of, say, six or a dozen other agents. Say out of six, you'll have two agents in that squad, say in Denver, Colorado. Two agents are already brought, bought, bribed, and paid for. And what's been very interesting, there's a number. It seems $1.5 million buys yourself a federal agent or buys a judge or buys a prosecutor. Because Leonard Millman was fined $80 million in a secret grand jury setting in 1997 in Denver, Colorado, where outside of Denver, a U.S. attorney came and prosecuted him, Larry Mizell, the bank bailout scam, sir, his buffer, who's now grown to the ranks of the, the Illuminati 12, uh, that's basically taken over a huge block of what he had when he disappeared and faked his death and went to Cuba to get off the radar scope. Millman paid an $80 million fine. Mizell paid a $5 million fine. Norman Brownstein, who was Millman's and Daddy Bush's attorney, who was also one of the six CI counsel when Daddy Bush was CI director in 1975, they... Uh, all paid five million dollars a piece, and what was significant about that case was that Mayor Frederico Pena, who had been in the food chain, took a two and a half million dollar bribe from Millman's buffer Phil Wynn, that sat on the board of directors, the bank bail or the HUD scamster that never went to prison, and Bill Clinton gave him a presidential pardon, and the judge gave him an illegal stay. Uh, sealed the case, and then he got the presidential pardon where he never spent time in jail, and he was to be sentenced to five years minimum for ripping off HUD, and they never got to the bottom of it because of a U.S. attorney who had also been bribed, Mike Norton, who was the one that put me illegally in jail as a political prisoner. It seems uh, uh, Mayor Frederico Pena took a $2.5 million bribe from, from Phil Wynn, and Mayor Frederico Pena 
paid a $1.5 million fine in that secret grand jury settlement. Now, what is significant if a person looks and watches and looks at Mayor Fred Ray Pena, 1997, resigns as Secretary of the Department of Energy, claims that it's because of his family and that he wants to resign. It's because he was under federal indictment at the time. Well, wow. And a reporter with the Rocky Mountain News went and brought it up in an in interview, and it is out on the Internet, where he asked him, is it true you're resigning because you're under indictment for bribes on the Denver airport? And he's all, well, who are you? Uh, uh, he was shocked that anybody even knew that. Really? They sealed this case under national security. The really? Clintons did. For the Bushes and for the Milmans. Really? Mm -hmm. And these guys all work together, basically. It was tied to what was called the m &L business machine case. Okay. Where they laundered the bribes through the... And m &L okay. was the largest check-hiding scandal ever in U.S. history in 1990. Wow. m and &L. M &L business tight, machines. Tight. Broke the bank of... Uh, Jesus. Or broke... Uh, 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 I want to say uh, uh, Columbia, uh, Columbia, uh, not Columbia. It broke uh, Capital Fed savings and loan of Aurora, Colorado. Uh, Stu, how did the with this Silverado and all these different circumstances, even before these characters got selected or appointed themselves, uh, what kind of a system do we have? which just lets them do whatever they like. The president that's uh, not even a citizen, that they don't even know who he is right now, and look what he's... How do, what, what type of safeguards do we have in our government? None. We don't have any safeguards anymore. Uh, when Bush arrived, George W., and they defrauded, they committed a, a, a treason and sedition, and they, they did the takeover, uh, which Senator Day O'Connor testified before a military tribunal back in the spring, that all the Supreme Court justices were bribed and threatened and coerced into saying that George Bush, George W. Bush is the President of the United States. Uh, it was because of, and it was a member 45 days or whatever it was before anybody could make a decision. Uh, the Constitution of the United States says that when uh, there's a runoff, such as with Bush and, and, and Gore, that it goes before the Congress and the Senate. It doesn't go before the Supreme Court. And they did that, and of course, the first thing they do is they throw the Patriot Act in right after they get in office. They had to start a war, so they could keep the Emergency War Powers Act going, which a president is a dictator, and that's what Barack Obama does. You know, you see these bills where it comes in, and he says, uh, you know, the president has a veto power. It's not the veto power. It's just they vote for something. He overrides it and goes in the back door, and he signs a presidential uh, emergency uh, uh, act to order, and it becomes law. And the problem that we've had is this takeover. You know, if we were to back up to the day of 911 and who was behind it, which was George Herbert Walker Bush, Leonard Bowman, Larry Mizell, Bibi Netanyahu, and Dick Cheney, and others, George W. Bush, it's the end of them. It throws out everything that they have done. The NDAA Act, which under Barack Obama, where they can just detain you illegally without even putting you before a court, classify you as a terrorist, send you to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, or Jordan, or Afghanistan, or one of the other prisons they have. And, uh, oh, and it throws that out the window. It throws the Patriot Act out of the window. It does the clawback law, uh, which means they can go in and confiscate. And all these assets that they've stolen, these $5,000 trillion dollars, with the money of derivatives and steal everything back. Uh, you know, these people are the largest landlord of apartments in the United States. I've got that. It used to be under AIMCO, and then they started breaking up after I exposed it on my site. And now they've got it down to 350,000 apartment units, each apartment being a unit. Uh, under AIMCO, Umbrella, T uh, Terry Considine, and, and Norman Brownstein, Milman and Mizell's attorney are on the board there. But they also, uh, you know, have other entities. But they are, they're the large, uh, largest landlord of single-family homes in America under several entities. Uh, they're buying up under management companies these repo units that they're stealing from people, turn around and set them up and rent them out. Uh, 
they're the largest landlord of commercial properties of various kinds. Everything from skyscrapers to malls of America, malls of Canada they own, which is the largest shopping mall owner. They, they're the largest building contractors with Richmond American Homes, uh, Ponderosa Homes, Wood Brothers Homes, KB Homes. Uh, used to be Kaufman and Broad, KB Homes, uh, U.S. Homes, the list goes on. I mean, they are running uh, uh, roughly uh, seven, uh, 97% of all uh, uh, companies in America now. They own Walmarts, they own uh, uh, Venture, uh, 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 Targets, uh, uh, Kmarts, uh, the list goes on, and the shopping centers. Uh, that they own uh, commercial centers. If you notice, we have this huge build building of new shopping centers. Uh, you know that would hold six or seven businesses uh, here and there on every street corner in America during the 80s and 90s. That was drug money that they were putting in those, and the money stolen from investors through Iran Contra, which turning around, going out of the country, coming back through trusts through Hillary Clinton or Rose Law Firm who was setting these up, look like foreign trusts, so they would not have to pay uh, income tax. And they made it look like it was Japanese companies and Chinese companies buying up America, when in fact, it was them. And then the trusts were transferred immediately to Norman Brownstein, and the, role, and the Brownstein law firm of Denver, Colorado, is the key to the trusts. Yeah. They've been buying up attorney after attorney after attorney. They have attorneys in every major city in this country controlling the assets in those cities. So they completely own the I mean, there's, there's hundreds of trillions of dollars <coughs> worth of commercial and residential real estate that could be confiscated in every state in this union if we do the recall clawback law on them. And can you imagine what it would do for the national debt? It would wipe the debt out out overnight. Mm -hmm. There would not be income tax for any state in the union. Nobody would have to pay income tax. It would be a declared free enterprise zone because then all those assets could be sold back. So say if you live in Missouri like I do in the Can in the Kansas City area. Okay, if you live in Missouri, you can buy those assets if you're a resident of Missouri. If you're a resident of another state, say uh, uh, Washington, uh, like you are out in Seattle, you're able to buy those assets. All of a sudden, say, you and 20 of your friends get together and you kick in a thousand bucks a piece and, and you get a couple investors maybe to kick in 20 grand or 40 grand, and all of a sudden, because you've confis the government's confiscated the bankings, changed the Federal Reserve back to uh, from a private bank that hijacked the money supply in America, and go Stu, back to private banks. We're at the, we're at the, Stu, we're at the end of the hour we got about 30 seconds left we could change everything overnight it comes down to bottom line is 12 men have to be stopped and they have they have about 10,000 directly underneath them and those 10,000 can be found at the trilateral commission the council of foreign relations and dr john coleman wrote about the connections in the lower part of the food chain he identified those individuals but the very 12 are the 12 i've named that will be in denver colorado on the winter solstice john, now, it's, it's if Stuart. you can't bring a criminal to justice you put a bullet in their head. Is I the appreciate way the it. StuWeb.com. Stu, Stu, we're at the end of the hour. Thank you very Thank much. You. We're greatly honored. StuWeb.com. Thank you. And also Veterans Today author slash Stu S. Webb. Stu, thank you. Great. We're grateful. Have a great Thank holiday. You. We appreciate it. Happy uh, Merry Christmas, too. Thank you.